Welcome to the Love Lab Podcast, a safe place to get real about sex. Whether you're a man, woman, single, or couple, this is the show for you. We are your hosts, Kevin Anthony and Celine Remy, and we are here to guide you to go from good to amazing in the bedroom and beyond. All right, welcome back to the Love Lab Podcast. This is episode 129, and it's titled, How to Have Hot Monogamy Forever. Okay, so, you know, this is interesting. This episode comes from feedback that we get from listeners. And the feedback kind of goes like this. You guys are always talking about going to sex parties and threesomes and open relating and all this kind of sort of crazy sex stuff. And apparently, shockingly enough, <laughs> not everybody can relate to that. <laughs> I know that's weird, right? I mean, <laughs> so, you know, people have requested that, hey, you know, we're, we're never going to go to sex parties. That's not something that we have in our relationship agreements. You know, it's not something that, that, that we would necessarily do. We're not going to have threesomes or any of that kind of stuff. But we are interested in how do we have the kind of sex that you talk about all the time, but with just the two of us, even though we've been married for 5, 10, 20, 30 years, whatever. Um, and so that's really what this episode is about. So, you know, married or not married doesn't really matter. The point is, is that you're in a committed relationship and that you are indeed interested in figuring out how to keep that relationship hot and sexy forever, basically. Absolutely. So in our relationship, we've been together five years, we've been married two years, and we are monogamous, and we still have great hot sex. As a matter of fact, we had great sex last night. And so we figured that we were going to share with you what we do, what works for us, what we've learned over the years. And we do have a different perspective coming from different backgrounds of having had open relationships versus being monogamous. And I think that that's a great skill or knowledge that we have, that we have had this in the past. But I really wanted to acknowledge that in this current time, that our relationship is more traditional, more monogamous. And at the same time, we've created rules for us that work for ourselves. There's not just one definition that fits all. But today we are focusing on hot monogamy because being monogamous is awesome. Being married is awesome too, by the way, if you haven't done it yet or thinking about it, it's great if you have the right guy or right girl for sure. So <laughs> we'll answer the questions of whether or not it's possible to be in a committed relationship with one person. And, and if you can keep the sex to be fantastic this whole time. But before that, uh, let's give a big shout out to our sponsors, Power and Mastery. So if you want to join the secret club of men who are great in bed, then check out Power and Mastery at powerandmastery.com. It is the most complete sexual mastery training for men, whether you want to have harder erections last longer, increase your sexual skills, uh, or anything related to becoming and bringing your A game to the bedroom, then go to powerandmastery.com. All right. So let's dive in. And well, basically, it's going to be a short show because the answer is yes. <laughs> the answer to is it possible to be in a committed sexual relationship with one person for years and decades and still have hot sex? Is that the, the short answer is yes? Yeah, the short answer is yes. <laughs> But that short answer requires a lot of explanation. <laughs> <laughs> so let's start with the first thing is... Yeah, and before, actually, before we start with that first thing, I just want to say that we kind of have two lists here. So one is kind of like a higher level view, you know, some really larger points that needs to be understood beforehand. And then later on, we'll get into more specific examples of what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So give you some tips. So make yeah. sure you listen into the end. So let's start with your expectations. You know, you got to adjust your expectations. That's a big word, expectations. Don't expect things to be like they were the first year you were dating. I mean, they could be, but for most people, they are not. Yeah. So, you know, I, I had to start with this one because if we're telling people, hey, look, you can have sustained hot 
sexy relationships over long periods of time. Absolutely, you can. But we do need to make it clear to people that, you know, that chemical attraction you felt when you first got together with somebody where fireworks were going off and, and he penetrates you and you both want to come immediately and like <laughs> it's just fireworks going off everywhere. A lot of that is actually brain chemicals mm -hmm. that, well, let's just face it, aren't going to necessarily be there a year two years, five years, 10 years down the road, right? Mm -hmm. So I just want to be really clear with people that we're not trying to take you back to the first six months you were dating or even the first year when you were dating. But, but don't be dismayed by that because actually where we are going to take you is even better than that, mm. right? So that, that's the whole thing about adjusting your expectations. Don't expect to go back to the first, you know, year or less of your relationship where the fireworks were going off, you know, left and right. Having said that, though, you can get to a level that is actually way better than that. So, Ooh, I can't wait to talk about that. Speaking of talking and speaking, talking with each other about how you would like things to be and being honest and creating a space where it is possible to talk about anything is the foundation to keep sex amazing. What we mean by that is that you are willing to be fully seen in all of your kinkiness and amazingness and in your mess too, in all of the different things. And you're willing to speak things out. Secrecy does not lead to great sex. Well, for some, it is a turn on, especially having an affair is one of the things that, that is exciting. Um, it's not going to bring a couple close together because you are going to be closed down to one another. So being able to have a foundation where you can acknowledge when things are awesome, when things are not as awesome, and then you can brainstorm things together will help to keep things going. Yeah. And so here's the thing is, is in that beginning stage that we're talking about that, you know, fireworks are going off and all the brain chemicals. You, you don't really have to do much, right? Mm -hmm. Because the brain chemicals are just handling it for you, uh -huh. right? You're kind of like on autopilot. It's all good. You're just, you know, it's great no matter what happens for the most part. <laughs> and you're in la-la land. Great. The problem is, though, is that when that wears off, people then don't communicate what they really need in order to keep that level of sexiness and turn on going. And that's why number two was so important and so high up on the list, so to speak, which is that, okay, you've adjusted your expectations, right? But now that those brain chemicals are wearing off, it's time for you to speak up. Mm -hmm. You need to speak up and say, hey, you know what would really turn me on? You know what I would really like? You know what's really fun for me? You know, And you both have to do that. But the only way that that's really successful is if you create that environment where you can say whatever you want, right? Because if you're like, if you're the woman and you're like, you know what would really turn me on is if you just like flipped me over, shoved my head into the pillow and fucked me in the ass, right? Like, and if the other person is like a deer in headlights going, what? Uh, uh, that's gross. Uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, what do I do? Right? Like you need to have that environment where you can have those types of conversations mm -hmm. and you can be really honest about what it is you want and what it is you need in order to keep this going. Yeah, and you, you're talking about needs here too, Kevin, which is our third step really in managing and keeping things hard for a really long time is you need to understand that underneath your feelings, your emotions, there's always needs. Needs are universal, which means everybody has them. There's basic needs like sustenance and um, safety and shelter, food. I mean, all of these different things that pretty much are essential. And then there's other needs that some people want more of or less of, right? And so once you understand that when something comes up, that it means that a need is not met, then you need to be able to acknowledge the need and then ask for 
like make a request. It's not a demand. It's a request where you can speak up and, and talk about your needs and maybe ask for some support around it. And so find ways that you can both get your needs met so that work for both of you. We're moving away from a battle of like, oh, I'm selfish and I want everything for me, me, me into how to create a win, 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 really a win for you, a win for your partner and a win for the relationship, which is a totally different relationship that you get in at the beginning with what's in it for me or what can I get out of this? Now you start to think differently. You you know, if you're in a relationship thinking about what's in it for you and what can you get out (laughs) of it, this is a failing relationship, period, period, like full stop, fucking period, Mm -hmm. right? Because that's not how relationships work. And that doesn't mean that you have to be totally selfless and give of yourself to no end, right? It's not what it means at all. But you have to realize that every relationship that you're in is a mix of the needs of both of you. And that's what it means to be in a relationship. Because if you only want to think about yourself, don't get into a relationship. Just be single. Do solo poly. Do something like that where you don't have to give a shit about anybody but yourself. Mm -hmm. But once you're in a relationship, you need to be thinking about the needs of both people. Mm -hmm. And that's why number three, again, is so high on the list because you may and likely will have different needs, Mm -hmm. right? I mean, how often is it that two people have the exact same needs all the time? You'll have some of the same needs and you'll have some of your own needs and they'll have some of their own needs. And so the idea then is how can you creatively make sure that both people and their unique needs are met in a way, and this is the key, in a way that works for everybody. And mm-hmm. you, you said that, and I just wanted to reiterate that because it's really important. Like there are tons of ways I could get my needs met. It doesn't mean you're going to like them all, you know? <laughs> Gee, I want more blowjobs. A way to get that need met is to go find other women to suck my dick. But you're not going to like that, right? So that's not a win-win. That doesn't work, Mm -hmm. right? So you got to find a way to make it a Mm win-win. And I think at some point we might do a whole episode on some of the communication basis that we're talking about here. If you're like wondering, well, how do I get to know about these needs? But you know what's fascinating too, when you take it away from just the emotional charge and get very clear on the need, which could be like, I'm really tired and I need some rest and some good food. And then the other one might be like, well, actually, I'm really full of energy and I need to move because I just want to be in touch with my body. Then it's really interesting to notice like, oh, well, why don't you go and walk to a restaurant, pick up some food while I rest and then you feed me like, and then everybody gets their needs met rather than bickering about like, oh, you don't want to rest on the couch with me or, or, or things like that, you know? So one you understand the need, it's so much easier to talk like very grown up, mature, evolved adults. And when you have this type of communication, it's sexy. It plain is. Yeah. And I want to say two things. First of all, to the audience, I get lots of blowjobs. So just so you know, I said, I don't get enough blowjobs. I actually do. I got a great one last night too. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin, for putting it straight. <laughs> The other thing that that I want to say is there are tons of creative ways to come up with those solutions. Mm -hmm. Uh, So just think outside the box, which we'll talk about in a different context in a minute. But um, And then then there was one other thing that I wanted to share, which now I'm forgetting what it was because there were too many things. (laughs) Hold on. Uh, Well, since you're having a brain fart. Ways to make it work for both of you. I don't know. I, I I'll I'm come gonna, back to it. I'm going to keep moving then. So this is a very important point that we want to bring to you. It's about not looking externally for satisfaction, that it starts from within. So there's this misconception that somebody else is going to complete you or somebody else is going to make you happy or um, basically fulfill your needs. And while, yes, did it come back? The brain fart. (laughs) Yes. Yes, it did. And it's in relation to needs again. Okay. (laughs) And what I wanted to to share with people was just that um, 
the needs can sometimes be difficult to get to. They can appear as a bunch of things on the surface, but the real need is actually somewhere way below that. So mm-hmm. you might have to work at it a little bit to find out what the actual underlying need is, which brings us back into needs that you were just sharing. So if you come into a relationship where you feel complete within yourself and you meet somebody else who feels complete too, the relationship really can be into this forever flowing and giving place. If you both feel like you're missing something or empty and that somebody else is going to complete you so you can make a full circle together, then you are going to run out of juice. So it's very important to do the work first, to feel comfortable with yourself, to be comfortable being alone. Being alone is not the same as being lonely, by the way. But if you are able to know that your satisfaction starts from within, and yes, things, people, and circumstances sometimes will impact you more than others, and it's okay, but understand that it starts from within, the relationship that you are in is going to be so different. So in the concept of monogamy and keeping things hot, it again brings it back to you understanding that nobody can give you an orgasm, nobody can make you happy or satisfied, that you have to speak up for yourself, all of the points which are shared, and sometimes your partner can support you in reaching these places. And honestly, that's the beauty of the committed relationship where you both dedicated to each other's highest good. Because when I can do something for you, And I know that in this contribution, I've made your life better. I've enhanced your life and your happiness. It makes it worthwhile for me. Yeah. So truth bomb here. Here it comes. (laughs) Here's the truth bomb. If you cannot be satisfied with yourself, then nobody else is ever going to be able to satisfy you. And you see this so, so often in relationships where somebody keeps expecting the other person to constantly satisfy them. And no matter what the other person does, they always feel inadequate because they can't actually satisfy them. That's because the satisfaction comes from within. Mm -hmm. So good. Let's talk about fun here because most people have it backward. They're always saying, I'm working on my relationship. We're going to make this work. And I always say, you work on your business. You work on your, I don't know, your taxes or whatever, those things that are not fun, right? (laughs) But your relationship should be a place of fun. And that doesn't mean you don't give it attention and energy, but you, you don't put the attitude of work, of getting it done. The other thing getting done is each other. Yeah, well, and what I would like to stress here too is that there are things that you could do to make your relationship awesome that that do maybe seem like work. Like for instance, maybe you're having communication difficulties and asking for what you want. And the two of you decide to take a workshop on nonviolent communication, compassionate communication, or some other form of communication or something like that. That could be considered work. You're Mm -hmm. going into a learning environment. You're being challenged with new things and practices that you haven't done before. That's great. And there's absolutely a place for that sort of stuff, without a doubt. However, one of the things that we do see couples get stuck in is it's always work. Mm -hmm. It's always work. It's always workshop after workshop after pushing this boundary, after pushing that boundary. I have seen more so in poly relationships, but I have seen so many Uh, you know, triads or open relationships or whatever, people sitting there in misery, literal fucking misery and telling themselves that this is something they have to do to push past this, this limit or this boundary that they have. Now, maybe that's true. Maybe that's true. But the reality is, is that it doesn't have to be all work and constantly pushing your boundaries. If it is, eventually you're going to get tired of it and you're not going to want to do it anymore. Mm-hmm. Right. It's like anything else. You want to you want to learn to play guitar like you see over here in, in the corner. Right. If everything you did on the guitar was nothing but work, you'd say, screw this thing, man. I'm not doing this anymore. Right. But what makes the work worth it is when you finally play that first song and you're like, that music is coming out of me, right? It's the same thing in your relationship. You've got to do things that make it 
fun. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to think outside the box too. And you're going to be willing to entertain ideas that you may not have been open to in the past. And just be, what is the term, trailblazer, basically? Trailblazer, yeah, right? Yeah, Where yeah. it doesn't matter what your parents did. I mean, learn from people what they've done, especially if they're still together, because there's value into that. But be true to yourself and your relationship. And what does your relationship want, needs, and create your own rules. Like we've made our own tradition together. See, this this was really fun. We're like, what's our new family tradition? What do we want to do? And this kind of things keeps things fresh and exciting and unique. And again, that thinking outside the box, and we've spoken about this a lot in many shows, so it's probably not going to be very new to hear it, but I'm going to share that again. Activating your creativity activates your sexual energy. There's a connection to how excited you feel about life, the, the juices that are flowing, this energy, sexual energy and creativity are the same. They come from the same place. And so when you are willing to be creative and be adventurous, it will serve you in the bedroom too. So you don't always have to learn new sex positions or do things that are specifically related to the bedroom. Just the sheer fact of learning a new skill or doing something different friend will bring that excitement energy back absolutely and so there, there's something i really wanted to to share about this one as far as you know sort of thinking outside the box and It's just, uh, so basically, I, I don't want to restate everything that, that you said, but just there's, there's so many different ways that you could, you could make these things happen. And so the big mistake that we see with a lot of couples is that they think monogamy looks a certain way, mm -hmm. right? Like there's, this is what monogamy means, but it's not working for them, but they're trying to force it to work for them. And so what I would say and what I, I kind of wanted to impart by having this on the list was just monogamy can look a lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. And that's where you got to think outside the box. That's where you got to be creative. You don't have to stick to the framework that you were given by your parents, your grandparents, your religious beliefs or whatever. There are a lot of ways that you can still have a monogamous relationship or an exclusive relationship or whatever term you want to use for it yet still get your needs met. And I want to bring one last point here, which is about keeping it up. That means that remember your relationship is like a plant. Um, once you've agreed that you've chosen this relationship, you are going to have to give it some energy and sometimes give it some good watering and extra feeding at times. And it is the same with your relationship. You can't just start the work and then be like, oh, that's it. I went to the workshop. Now we're good. It's a constant redirecting of your energy into the relationship, putting things and energy into the relationship bank account here. And remember that a happy and sexy relationship is a living entity. It needs nourishing just like any other living thing. And that there really is the key, right? Mm -hmm. Too many people want to set it and forget it. Mm -hmm. All right, we took the workshop, we did the thing, we'll blah, 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 and it just runs on autopilot from here on out. That's not how it works. Nope. Nope. And if you think that's the way it works, you are going to be in for one hell of a bumpy ride mm -hmm. because it doesn't work that way. You just, you have to nourish it just like anything else that's living. So I wanted it to be a little bit personal because I think Ooh. it was last week or so we, uh, you, we were making love and then you looked up and you were just like, man, I just love being married in a relationship. And one of the things that you were realizing was that in a sense, we were being kinkier than we were five years ago. And that there's something about how anything goes. I don't know if you quite remember how you say that, but it was like how you felt so comfortable to ask for anything you wanted and how sexy and good it felt. So I'm curious about your version of the story to share this with our audience. <laughs> yeah, you know, I don't specifically remember exactly what I said, but I do understand the thought or feeling that I was trying to convey when I said it, which was that, you know, when you're when you're somewhat new and early on in a relationship you you're still like 
on your best behavior, so to speak, you know, and you're still like, you want to present a certain image of yourself and you don't know everything about the other person yet. So you're like, Hey, I don't want to push the boundaries too far. Cause I don't know if she or he's going to like that. Or what if she thinks I'm weird or crazy or I remember what brought it up, Kevin. It was the day where you wanted your balls stretched. The oh. day you couldn't get enough of that. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. You're right. So, well, it's not so much that I w wanted it, but what was happening is, is, is you were like pulling on them pretty aggressively um, while you were riding me, actually. <laughs> yes, yes, she was in reverse cowgirl. That's how that works. <laughs> well, you asked for it. It's not that I just went for your balls. You were saying you wanted them to be pulled. And you're like, I just can't seem to get enough. Well, uh, yeah, I think what happened was you, you, you started touching them because you yes. do that usually in reverse cowgirl. And then I was like, oh, that feels really good. So please keep doing it, right? <laughs> and, and so you were, and you were, you were pulling on them somewhat aggressively. And I was, in that moment, I was somewhat surprised that I was liking it as much as I was. And you were asking for more. So, so then I was like, oh, I keep doing it. <laughs> and, and that's the thing. And that, that's kind of what came up afterwards, after sex was over, when we were talking about it, like, Like maybe in the beginning of our relationship, I might not have said, keep pulling on those things. And I don't know, maybe I would, maybe I wouldn't have, but, <laughs> but the point is, is that, you know, when you've been together for enough time and you know each other really well, you don't mind. Like I had no problem saying, yeah, go for it. You know, like pull on my balls. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because there was just there was no like, oh, she's going to think I'm weird if I ask her to do that or anything like that. And so the point that we're trying to make here for you, the audience, <laughs> is that one of the beautiful things about being in a long term committed relationship is that you can get to that place where you can actually feel way more free to ask for stuff, no matter how crazy it is, uh, than maybe you were in the beginning. Yes. So we're going to do a quick break for our sponsors, and then we'll share with you a fascinating study of uh, last year and some specific tips to keep it hot. So if you know those times when you're so into what you're doing that you can't think about anything else, uh, the days when you've closed that big deal, won that game, made love for hours and checked everything off your list and it was effortless and it just flowed. Mm, I love that. How would you like to feel like that every day? I vote yes. Psychologists call that feeling of being in the zone flow state, the optimal level of consciousness where you can perform at your best. Alpha brain, helps you achieve flow state and supports each and supports other aspects of cognitive function for better memory, focus, and mental processing. Alpha Brain can help you remember names and places, focus on complex tasks, think more clearly under stress, react more quickly, and it protects your brain and mental clarity. So if you are interested and want to get more in the flow more often and, and unlock the potential of your brain, then check out Alpha Brain. Alpha Brain is at onnit.com. It's O-N-N-I-T.com. And we've got a special coupon for you where you can save up to 10% off by using Love Lab at the checkout. So again, go to onnit.com and use our coupon code Love Lab for 10% off at the checkout. Out. I obviously did not have my uh, alpha brain today since I forgot what I was saying in the middle of the conversation <laughs> before. <laughs> See, next time. <clears throat> so I want to talk about a study that uh, we found while we were prepping this episode. And this study is really recent. It was uh, done in July of 2020. And it was published in the Journal of Social, Psychological and Personality Science. And it was talking about are couples more satisfied when they match in sexual desire? Because this is a big thing that people deal with when they're in relationship, right? Where they're like, well, they have different libido, different desire. And if it's mismatched, like, does it affect the happiness of the relationship? So the current findings, they do not support the idea that matching on sexual desire between partners is linked to satisfaction in romantic relationships. That's, that's interesting, right? Because a lot of people use that excuse like, oh, this is why we're not doing so well. But actually, it's not really the cause. Therefore, in existing relationship in which desire discrepancies are common, it might not be fruitful for partners to aim too much on desire, but rather to find ways to maintain desire over the course of their relationship or successfully navigate sexual differences. 
So really, this suggests that rather than trying to align partners' levels of sexual desire to be more similar, couples can build a more satisfying sexual relationship by focusing on strategies to manage these differences. For example, communicating effectively when sexual desire is low or finding ways to boost or reignite your sexual desire in the relationship. Oh, so what you're telling us is that this study validates everything that we just told the audience. Yes, and that's why we put it in there to just prove that science, to prove our point with science, basically. Hey, hey, but you know what I love about this kind of stuff is we created that list before we even found this study. That is true. That's true. We like when we can, we like to do research and bring you some other perspective or science again, because it's not just about what we think. We we do have our love lab. We do always experiment for ourselves. But it's nice when we get some external. Um, I don't know if I would say the term validation, but other people who have similar experience and when there are studies like this that, that show that what we experience happens for a lot of other people, it feels even better to share these tips with you because we know we're right spot on, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I mean, granted, because this is the work that we do and we've been doing it for a long time, we have a lot of experience. And so that does count for something. But there are always going to be those people that go, eh, yeah, whatever. It's just the people that, that tend to come see you. But what does science say about it? Well, there you go. That's what the science says about it. So we want to share with you nine tips, ideas to keep it hot. So get ready, pull out maybe a notebook or maybe listen to this part of the show twice because we're going to give you some really good tips. All right. Number one, have a dedicated date night. We keep saying this over and over again, but this really is one of the keys. It is way too easy to let it slide if you don't make it a regular occurrence. Remember our two rules? You got to do something together that's not on the screen and you got to be naked at some point. That's right. It doesn't have to have <laughs> penetration, just nakedness and togetherness. Mm -hmm. It usually does lead to good penetration. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll let you imagine the rest. <laughs> Number two, try new things that you've never done. Remember, we talked about the creativity aspect, but here it could be things like change positions, you know, or pull on his balls or rotate or do reverse cowgirls, you know, change the time. If you're always having sex in the morning, have sex at night or middle of the afternoon, change places, um, maybe add some toys sometimes or lingerie, something different just for the sake of it. To, to keep it interesting. I mean, if you like, we go for a walk every morning and, and we don't take the exact same route <laughs> every morning because that would get fucking boring, right? Yes. Sometimes we go a different way. Sometimes we go left at the gate. Sometimes we go right at the gate. You know, it's just like you, you, you mix it up. You do different things to keep it interesting and fun. Number three, make sure that you are maintaining a constant state of arousal. If you've been listening to the Love Lab, you've heard that term more than once. Oh, you sure have. <laughs> you know, we, not, we don't actually have time in this episode to go into what we really mean by it, but we have talked about it so many times before. Go find another episode where we really go into the depth of it. But I will just simply say that, you know, it's so helpful because you, you want to keep things sexy, but trying to go from zero sexy to 100% sexy is so, so hard. So the constant state of arousal means you're going maybe from like 20, 30, 40, 50% sexy to 100. It's a much shorter distance to travel and much easier to do. And remember, your relationship is a living entity. And that's really what we mean with that constant state of arousal that you putting attention and energy into the sexy part of the relationship. Mm -hmm. All right. The, uh, the next one is probably going to be a little bit controversial for some of you, but I had to put it on the list because it is a reality of life. It's do your best to keep your bodies healthy and in good shape. Okay. So we do hear from time to time, like, well, you know, we've been together a long time. We've all put on some weight or, you know, we're not really all that attractive anymore. Sometimes it's hard to get motivated to want sex. Well, there's, there's a somewhat easy way around that particular problem. Don't let yourself go to shit. <laughs> All right. I mean, mm -hmm. I get it. It's not that easy. It takes work. You love to eat what you love to eat. Maybe you're busy, whatever. You don't have a lot of time to go to the gym, but there's always stuff that you can do. The healthier you keep your body, the more attractive you are going to be. There is a reason why men are attracted to young women. And it's not 
it's not what most people think. It's not because, oh, they're going to be better and better. Oh, they're going to want more sex. Or, oh, and most of that's not even true. The reason is, is because we are programmed genetically inside our bodies to be attracted to health. Mm-hmm. Why? Why? Because a young, healthy woman has a much better chance of raising successful offspring than an older, unhealthy one, Right. And same thing, women do it too. It's not just men towards women. Women do the same way. They look at a guy and they look at a guy who's obese and, and you know has a bunch of bad habits and is really not healthy. And they go, what are the chances that his sperm are actually going to make it? Mm-hmm. And, and if they do, how healthy is this kid going to be? Right. And so by nature, we're programmed to look for health. And so simply improving your health is instantly going to make you more attractive to your partner and to yourself basically if you're looking into the mirror and you can't love yourself or you can't find your body attractive you can't expect your partner to do that and so you don't have to be like model size but you just got to be able to love who you are and it's true your body will change especially as women we will put some weight on as we're going through hormonal changes but it doesn't mean that we're not just as beautiful Hey, look, I had this swimsuit for <laughs> years. This just happened, right? I had this swimsuit for years. Really nice, like Patagonia, you know, kind of like board short swimsuit. It's in, still in perfect condition. I've had it for years. So we don't wear swimsuits that often. <laughs> <laughs> and what's funny is, is uh, we were doing some closet cleaning and, and I was like, I'm pretty sure last time I tried that on, it didn't really fit very well. So let me try it again. So I put it on. And the thing is, is, I mean, around my hips, it's literally bone to bone. Like I don't have any extra fat whatsoever, yet it doesn't fit anymore, (laughs) which kind of boggles the mind, right? Like, but if there's no fat in the way, it fit fit before, why doesn't it fit now? And the reality is, is that we change as we get older. We widen a little bit. Things are expanding a little (laughs) bit. (laughs) I don't want to admit that, but I mean, it still looks fine because it's still just, you know, my bone, you see my hip bone sticking out, you know, but, (laughs) but it's just funny, like those changes happen. And so we get that, like there's, there's certain things that you're not really going to be able to do much about, but you don't really have to worry about that. As my friend said a couple of weeks ago, and I said this on the show too, that he was saying that, you know, um, the aging part actually makes him more attractive Mm -hmm. to his wife. You know, and that's true. There is a certain part of that that is more attractive. So you don't have to look like the 20 something year old model. You just have to look like a healthy version of yourself, whatever age you are. So let's talk about our tip number five, practice appreciation daily, see the best in each other. So focus on the things you appreciate about each other. It will go a long way in keeping things hot and juicy for a long time. Now we're going to talk about uh, number six, because this is the only time The only time (laughs) we tell you that it's okay to watch porn. Yeah. So I put this on the list and you took it off. And then I was like, no, we should really put it back. back, So put it back. Watch porn together. (laughs) We always say we're not against porn and there are some legitimate uses for porn. Mm -hmm. And this is the one time where this is a legitimate use for porn. And let's get clear. You're not going to turn on porn and try to have sex while watching porn. That's not what we mean. What we mean is you're going to sit down. You can grab some popcorns if you want (laughs) and find something to watch and look at it together and kind of feel like how maybe you can talk about how it was. Maybe you have to pause it so then you can do each other. That's very important. Don't just watch porn and have sex. Well, yeah, just have it running in the background, blah, blah, blah. But the idea really is to use it as an aid to help jumpstart your arousal. Mm-hmm. And then you take it from there. That, that's the idea behind it. Ah, let's talk about number seven. Oh, I want to talk about number seven. It's about exploring on your own. It's really important. Sometimes when you're in a relationship, you forget that you also are in a relationship with yourself. And so, especially for all the women listening, it's important for you to know your body better, to know what you like, how you like to be touched so that you can direct your partner. You can let your partner know what feels really good for you. And if you're a man, learning to masturbate differently so that you can last longer and use it as a training tool to be a 
better lover in bed will go a long way. So sometimes exploring your sexuality through self-love and masturbation will help you to be a better lover or to come up with new ways that you want to be touched, which again will spark some fire in your relationship. Yeah, like we said earlier, it starts from within. Mm, yeah, with a finger within. <laughs> 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 or five fingers wrapped around or whatever. <laughs> Let's talk about our tip number eight, which is really important. If you've made it all the way to the end of this show, you're going to get like the gold here. If you want to have hot sex forever, you got to manage your stress level. There's a strong correlation. The higher the stress, the less libido you have or desire for sex. The more you're able to let go of your stress level, the more you're going to be willing to have sex and be attracted to your partner. Yeah, you know, this is another nature programming thing. Mm -hmm. Nature, God, whatever you want to call it, whatever you believe in, has programmed this for a reason. <laughs> and the idea is, is that when you're stressed you don't have a desire for things like sex. Why? Because you need the energy to deal with the saber tooth tiger that's stalking you or you know the fact that you've got to find food before you starve to death or whatever it is. That heightened stress level is designed to help you accomplish a task. And sex most likely is going to be a distraction for that task. So mm -hmm. we're kind of programmed that the higher the stress level goes, the lower the, the, uh, the sexual desire level mm -hmm. goes. And so um, if you want that sexual desire level to be higher, you got to bring the stress level back down. And so the perfect example, we just came off a nice vacation for this year, our first one all year long. And we, I mean, it, yeah, it took a few days to settle in. But once your nervous system kind of relaxes, all of a sudden you start feeling horny again. You're like, ooh, hey, hey, <laughs> hey, babe, what are you doing right now? <laughs> right. But you can clearly feel that difference. Mm hmm. And then number nine, just do it. Just do it without expectations. Sometimes your sex will be great, sometimes not. But if you only wait until you're both in the mood and all the stars are aligned and that it's going to be fantastic, you're going to miss the boat. And the longer you go without sex, the harder it will be to get back into the groove. So keep doing it. Do it often and don't be attached to it. But keep the wheels turning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right everybody that is all the time we have for this episode and we will see you next week we hope you like this episode of the love lab podcast if you enjoy this show subscribe leave us a review and share it with your friends and for more free exclusive content join us in the passion vault at celineremy.com forward slash vault that's c-e-l-i-n-e-r-e-m-y dot com forward slash vault thanks for listening and remember you're amazing